Hi, so today we're going to talk about iron. Iron is really important for heme synthesis and if you don't know that, please check out my video which I will link up above. But please, um, you know, figure out why iron is important in the body. You really should know that. But anyway, so today we're going to talk more about iron. Okay, so let's start with iron absorption. So when we eat our food and there's iron there, the most common form of iron is in its ferric state, which is the Fe3+. So let's say we eat steak or something that's rich in iron, it's usually in its ferric state. And then when we eat it, it goes through our stomach where it reacts with hydrochloric acid or HCl. And during this interaction, it reduces the ferric iron, Fe3+, to ferrous iron, F E2 plus and then when it passes through the duodenum and jejunum um, it gets oxidized again into the ferric state so yes it goes from Fe3 to Fe2 and back into Fe3 plus when it goes past the mucosal cells of the duodenum and jejunum and then when it gets out into our bloodstream it gets picked up by the transferrin which tightly bounds to iron and ships it wherever our body needs iron. So now let's cover some of the terminology. I just mentioned earlier transferrin. Transferrin is a beta globulin protein that tightly bounds to iron and it is the main um, protein that's responsible for distributing iron all over our body. So two-thirds of our total body iron is used for hemoglobin synthesis and the excess one-third of that is taken to our bone marrow, liver, and spleen for storage. Which takes me to my second um, point for terminology. Remember this one, ferritin. Ferritin is the stored form of iron. So any excess iron that's not used for hemoglobin synthesis is stored as ferritin. Ferritin is a spherical protein that binds up to 4,500 atoms of iron and they are stored in our bone marrow, spleen, and liver. Lastly, let's talk about TIBC, which is the total iron binding capacity. This is important because this indirectly measures how much transferrin you have by measuring the amount of iron that can be bound to transferrin in a fully saturated state. So that's the textbook definition of it, and I'm going to talk about it more later on this lecture. So as I've said earlier, only two-thirds of our total body iron is used for hemoglobin synthesis. So the excess one-third of iron is shipped off to our MPS or the mononuclear phagocytic cells or the reticuloendothelial cells of our bone marrow, liver, and spleen. That's where they are stored as ferritin. It is water soluble and when the body needs iron, it's very easily um, utilized by the body. So the other form of storage for iron is hemosiderin and unlike uh, ferritin, it's not easily utilized by the body and it's released more slowly than ferritin. So let's move on to lab evaluation of iron. So let's start with serum iron. Serum iron is the transferrin bound iron in your blood. And the normal range for serum iron for males is at 65 to 170 micrograms per deciliter and for women it's lower. Next up for lab evaluation is the TIBC which I initially touched on earlier which is the total iron binding capacity. Basically this thing just indirectly measures how much transferrin you have in your body. And that's it. Don't make it more complicated than it is. Like the book gives you a really weird description of it, but in the end, it's really just the amount of transferrin that you have in your blood. Quick trivia about transferrin. Transferrin actually binds to 1.4 milligrams of iron per one gram of it. And then the normal range for TIBC is at 250 to 450 micrograms per deciliter. Next up is the transferrin saturation. So this tells you the amount of iron that is bound in plasma to transferrin. So the formula goes like this. You divide serum iron by the amount of transferrin you have times 100%. Pretty straightforward. 
if there's only less than 16% iron saturation, this is a sign of iron deficiency. Lastly, we have ferritin. Yes, ferritin is measured in the lab and the normal range for ferritin is between 20 micrograms to 300 micrograms per deciliter. Yes, that's a pretty big range. Uh, anyway, a better, this is a better gauge of the condition of iron stores in the body compared to measuring, let's say, the serum iron or the TIBC. And that's it for Iron Today. Thank you for watching. We are now at 450 subscribers and I'm very happy. So please, if you like my content and it helps you learn hematology, please do like and subscribe. That'll mean the world to me. And uh, stay tuned because the next videos will cover more of hypochromic anemias. So thank you for watching and 